what's going on my dudes and welcome back to the triple log channel i thought i'd do a quick video today on you guys choosing the right motorcycle but before we get started guys same as always thank you so much for liking and subscribing as i keep saying it does really help the channel out and if you haven't already please just give it a little little smash down the bottom there Alrighty, guys so it's one thing having in your mind what sort of motorcycle you would like we all have this sort of expectation of what motorcycle we really wanted to ride. Like for example, I always dreamed about riding sport bikes and I have done. And it's not to say necessarily that I didn't enjoy riding it when I did get one. So before I had this street triple, I had an R6, a Yamaha R6. And uh, it was absolutely immaculate. Beautiful, beautiful machine. But having had it for commuting, to and from work, the ergonomics, you know, you're constantly leaned on your wrist, even when like, you know, you put into practice about clamping down with your legs, that sort of thing. That's all well and good. But the ergos on this Triumph Street Triple, it's like night and day. I could do hours and hours on end on this bike because I'm just sat bolt upright. The power is just usable. It's all in the low end, so when I'm getting around the twisties, trying to get ahead of traffic, <laughs> the power is, and is always there. Whereas sport bikes, they're obviously designed for the racetrack where you spend a lot of time at high revs, so not always the most usable for the street. Anyway, I digress. So you're beginning your journey. And where should you begin? So let's go right back to the very beginning of when you can start riding legally on the road. So you're 16, you can take your CBT, and you can now have a 50cc motorcycle on the road. Whether it be geared or twist and go scooter, that is obviously completely up to you and your discretion. I would say, you know, if you're unsure of the roads, twist and go is not always a bad way to go. It gives you less things to think about controls wise and whatever. On the other hand, I would also argue the fact that might as well get started now with your gears and learning how to control them and put them into action in the bends and whatnot. Now don't get wrong, it is only a 50cc, you know, it is only a 50cc bike. So you're quite limited on power. But it's a good place to start. I know I loved mine when I was on it, crashed it, lack of experience, etc. Oh well, it happens. As long as you come out alive, that is the main thing. So, moving on now. Now you're 17, you can use a 125 machine. If you've waited till you're 17, you will obviously have to take a CBT, you know, amongst obviously your insurance and things like that, make sure you've got your provisional license. So having a 125 machine is like the breakthrough onto potentially what a big bike is almost like, I guess. You learn a lot, the controls are obviously the same, the way the bike's handle is the same. The difference is now, compared to a 50cc, you can up your speeds that bit more. I know my 125, I once topped it out at about 75 down a hill, feeling like an absolute boss at the time. Anyway, I digress. The whole thought of having a 125 is great because the range of different style of motorcycles you can get in a 125cc engine machine is incredible. If you're into your sport bikes, if you're into super motors, if you're into even adventure bikes, like the ADV styles, there are 125s out there that will suffice just for that. You know, wheelie bin thinking that's a very funny speed limit but it's not <laughs> so whatever it is that you desire from from a motorcycle end of the day riding the bike is the exact same you know whether it be small engine or big engine so go out try a few go to a dealership have a, have a little sit on one if you've got a, if you've got a mate with one have a little go see what you can uh, see what you like because sometimes you might get a bike that you thought you liked but didn't really. And it turns out that it just wasn't really for you, but another style was. 
Okay, moving on. Now you are 19. You've had some road experience, or maybe you hadn't, and you just wanted to wait until you can get onto something a bit more, well, a bit more speed, a bit more power, a bit more weight. Oh, I wish that corner was a bit faster. Anyway, I digress. I love that saying, I digress. So anyway, you're now 19. You can now take your restricted A2 license. Now, your restricted license will permit you to ride a 35 kilowatt or a 47 brake horsepower machine. I won't go into the power to weight ratio because this is what it's all based around, but what it basically means is that you will be able to have a big bike, but it'll be restricted in power. Thankfully, these days, a lot of the hard work has been done for you. So for examples like the Triumph Trident, for example, which is a fantastic machine. Not that I'm biased owning a Triumph myself, but I hate to say I am. If I had a restricted license, that's probably a bike that I would go for. You could go for some of these sort of sport bike replicas, these Yamaha R3, the Kawasaki Ninja 4s or 3s and personally not my thing but if I had a, a restricted license they would be the sort of points I'd be looking at. Uh, KTM do some good lineups as well of, of smaller engine motorcycles, plenty of grunt, uh, you know, twin, twin engines. Anyway, I digress. So you've now held your A2 for two years and they now deem you responsible enough to retake your test, which means pay again, to do the same test that you did, just on a bigger powered machine. And at this point, once you've passed this test, you are now able to legally ride anything you like. Doesn't mean you should. It all depends on your riding experience, what you plan on doing with the bike, where you plan on going, and who you plan on going with. So, bearing that in mind, it's all about the choice and style of the bike that you choose. So if you plan on chopping loads of miles, then I wouldn't necessarily recommend a sport bike for doing so, even though it is capable. If you look up a chap on YouTube called Teapot One, that dude traveled basically around the world on a GSX-R1000. He is a fantastic motor vlogger, very entertaining, but also, man, what an incredible rider to be able to do that. That is not an easy feat at all. So check him out, Teapot One. I'll leave a link in the description for you to go see him. Epic. So back onto the choice of motorcycle. If you plan on chopping loads of miles, then maybe something like an ADV adventure bike, even Triumph do the Tiger. Fantastic. Here we go, there's that bias again. Um, you know, BMW do the GS 1200. I did consider it, but I'm five foot seven. So I'm quite short, but maybe I'll give one a try one day. Back onto my point of trying things. You just never know. If sport bikes really are your thing, you plan on doing maybe a bit of, bit of track or, you know, a bit of hooligan style with your friends, which is what really, you know, got me into riding was, I used to love the, sort of street hooligan thing when I was younger, you know, people doing wheelies and, uh, you know, dragging knee round roundabouts and things, which, you know, uh, a bit, you shouldn't do. Still looks kind of cool. But you kind of grow out of that. Some do anyway. Anyway, but if you're planning on having a bit of a commute, uh, something to sort of flick around the twisties and whatnot, things like this street triple, or even a speed triple, you know, things like that with the upright bars and whatnot, nice and comfortable ergo, something for you to basically sit on top of rather than being all hunched up and leaning on your wrists all the time and things like that. So there are many, many options. If you're more about the sort of Sons of Anarchy uh, culture, you know, cruiser, bobber style, choppers, that sort of thing, and I'm probably going to get slated by the crowd in this zone. I mean, no offense. It's just not a culture that I've quite got involved in at all. But the way I see it is, man, we all ride, you know, we're all in the same club. It doesn't matter of the style that you ride. I really do hope this video has helped you guys out on sort of making your choice on where to go. And like I've said in my previous videos, there will be a Discord server up real soon. It'll be a good space for us riders to 
post up our, our rides and stuff in a private and well vetted, uh, I suppose like forum, if you remember the old school forums, it's a bit like that. So we can all get involved in the community and help out with maintenance tips, etc., etc. And then, well, we'll see it grow from there, I guess. So that should be up hopefully, hopefully this week. But I will keep you guys posted. If you have any questions, anything like that, pop them in the comments, drop me a DM on Instagram. And then when the server's up, we can communicate on there. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe. I will catch you guys in the next one. You have all been amazing. Peace out, guys.